Hello and welcome to another colourful edition of A Splash of Paint, brought to you in association with the SAA, Society for All Artists. Today's programme is a vibrant collection of practical demonstrations and exercises to inspire your artistic passion and encourage you to try something new. So settle back and join us for 60 minutes of all the latest creative tips, techniques from some of the most popular leading artists. Let's get started and take a look at what's on today's palette. Enthusiastic oil artist Marion Dutton drops by to tell us a few of her favourite things. Pencil artist Malcolm Cudmore takes the fear out of life drawing using tinted charcoal pencils in today's Try Your Hand At project. We take a step inside the fantasy world of SAA professional watercolour artist Sharon Hurst as part of our regular introducing feature. And popular TV artist Keith Pennant will be showing us some simple texture techniques to bring your tree bark to life. But first folks, I'm going to show you a little project. I've pre-prepared this sketch of a person walking down a lane with his umbrella up because it's raining, in fact he's slinging it down. And I thought it'd be quite interesting to show you how to paint a figure in a dark atmospheric scene. Obviously it gives nice life to your paintings as well. So basically I'm going to start off by using a pale blue. Now this could be any blue, this particular one is natural blue. I'm going to paint in the umbrella and that goes in very simply, just doing the outline of it. In fact, if you do one side slightly darker, make sure you get those nice points there. I'm just going to go all the way underneath, making the lines thinner as we get towards the right hand side. I've left that piece white because I'll clean the brush, dab it on tissue and just use water to pull it in to the centre because I want a lighter part. If you think about something that gets wet, it reflects the light and we need to try and capture that in the watercolour so we'll have a lighter and darker point to the actual brolly. I feel like it's coming down from this side. I'll leave it to dry a few seconds while I'm painting in the actual figure. And I'm going to use the blue mixed with natural grey. That's a good jeans colour, Levi's. We'll work it down and again I'll just do the darker points of this, so the left hand side is slightly darker. I'm not going to paint his so I love his shoe and we'll leave that just for the minute and we'll just go underneath there and do the same thing again. Just clean your brush, dab it on a bit of tissue so it's not dripping in colour and then just use a bit of water just to fill it in and make it lighter as it goes over to the other side. Now while that's a wee bit damp, I'm going to pick up some natural grey on its own, quite thick, quite heavy. I'm just going to drop in some, I suppose, shadows and creases and folds and things on the side of the actual trousers there. There we go. Again, I'm going to leave it to dry a few seconds while I'm painting the actual jacket. I'm going to go for a bit of a burnt sienna, which is a rusty colour, and just drop some grey with it. So it's burnt sienna and grey. And we can just use this to paint in the actual jacket. Now obviously this chap's holding the brolly, so his arm needs to come down on a bit of a curve. And we'll fill it in. We'll go right up to the edge, the bottom edge of the umbrella there. Bring it over to that side. And again, we'll leave a lighter piece, clean your brush, wipe it on tissue again, and just use the water to blend it off. And you can almost see that figure there straight away. I've got the dark grey again, and I'll drop in the shadows. It wants to be darker underneath the brolly to make it look as though it is actually underneath it. Think about the shadow, and just a couple of little creases and things on the actual jacket. If I clean my brush, I can just lightly soften it in a little bit as well. So you can see there, you can almost see him stood there. And then I'll get the grey again, the dark grey, and I'll paint in the bottom of the uh, shoe to give the impression as though he's actually uh, walking. Size 10 there. And then just put the darkness on the base of that one as well. So you can see how that chap's walking down the lane there. Back to the colour for the brolly, just very quickly. I'm just going to drop in a little bit of tonal work on the actual umbrella itself. So 
The ones at the back, I'm just going to darken a touch. Not too much, a little bit. And then just put little bits of tonal work, clean the brush, and then just literally smudge them away. And it just gives the impression as though it's actually got the sort of folds in the umbrella. And then I'll wet the ground where he's walking. So it's raining. I've got the grey, which I need to drop in a bit of a reflection of his uh, legs there. And then just a bit of a shadow cast from the light going off to the side. They're one of the nicest things is just put a couple of little bits of detail coming down for the rain just splashing off. This is a size six brush I'm using for this, but you could use a rigger brush and put a few drips on the end of the uh, brolly. It just helps to give that impression of a little bit of uh, activity going off. And that's it, folks. Very simple, but really effective in your pictures. Well, folks, it's time to see what enthusiastic oil artist Marion Dutton had to say when she dropped by the Splash of Paint studio and we asked her to reveal a few of her favourite things. I haven't actually been on any painting holidays, um, but one of the places that I really think um, you wouldn't be stuck for any kind of inspiration has to be Italy. You've got Lake Como, Lake Garda, um, all these beautiful places that you can visit. Um, so I think Italy would definitely be a place I would be continually inspired by. Typically for me, um, I would always choose a flat synthetic brush. Um, I do believe you can cover a, a wide range of techniques with that. But I also, one of my favourite brushes is a, an old warm brush that I've had for years and I can use that for blending. Pet portraits are probably the number one subject, um, followed closely by, by florals, um, simply because you get to use all the yummy colours. Um, but if I had to choose one, it would be pet portraits. Without a doubt, it has to be opera um, or classical music. Um, I've had arguments with umpteen people, but I will still stand my ground. You cannot paint to rock music. All of it is all essential. All of it is essential. Super, thanks for that, Marion. I'm sure we'll be seeing a lot more from Marion in future programmes. Well, folks, it's time for a quick break now, but join us when we return with today's Try Your Hand Up project. We'll see you after the break. Mm -hmm.